Hello everyone and welcome back to Jacket Educational Channel. So in this video, we are going to do some of the important questions related to environmental science and engineering paper for the GATE examination. These questions are taken from the sample questions which is given in the GATE website and if you haven't checked, I will provide the link in the description below. So without wasting much time, let's get started. So this is the second part in this series and if you haven't checked the first part you can check because in that part also we have discussed some of the important questions. So let's start today's question. So this question is a 2 milliliter of sewage sample having the BOD that is biochemical oxygen demand of 5 days that is BOD 5 of 500 milligram per liter is diluted to 200 ml that means it has taken 200 ml of sewage sample and 198 ml of distilled water we have added to make it 200 ml so and it is incubated for 5 days at 20 degrees celsius if the dissolved oxygen content after 5 days is found to be 5 milligram per liter then the initial dissolved oxygen content of the diluted sample was how much so it is asking the initial do and all these things are given so don't get confused with these things there is a very simple formula we will see how to solve these kinds of question within seconds so this is the brahmastra and here with the help of this simple formula you will be able to solve these kind of questions very easily so what is the formula the formula is to find the biochemical oxygen demand of the sample of water that is BOD the formula is equal to dissolved oxygen initial minus dissolved oxygen final multiplied by the total diluted sample that means the sample along with the solution that is the dilution of the water for the distilled water which is given here 200 ml divided by the sewage or the sample water taken so here the sewage or sample water taken is 2 ml so what we have to do just simply put all this formula and we will get the answer so here we have to find one thing we have to find the initial do so this thing we have to find and we have all these things so we will put one by one and we'll see how we are getting this dissolved oxygen initial so bod is given how much bod five days it is given 500 milligram per liter so we'll write 500 in the left hand side is equal to dissolved oxygen initial so that we will take as x so we have to find that's why we will take that is x milligram per liter minus dissolved oxygen final so how much it is so it is given that the dissolved oxygen after 5 days is found to be 5 milligram per liter so we will write 5 that is the dissolved oxygen final so whole will take it as bracket multiplied by total diluted sample in ml that means total it was diluted 200 ml so 2 ml of sewage sample was taken and 200 ml it was made so here we will multiply total diluted sample that is 200 then we will divide the whole by sewage or sample water taken that is 2 ml of sewage water was taken that is was sample so we will divide it by 2 next what we will do is simply we have to solve this so after solving that we will get that here we will multiply this one and after solving all this we will get I am clearing all this so what we have to do we will see here that in the left hand side we will write 500 will get multiplied with the 2 that was in denominator so here it will be 1000 is equal to dissolved oxygen initial that is we have to find x minus dissolved oxygen final which was 5 multiplied by the total diluted sample that is 200 so again this 200 will go to this LHS so I am not teaching you this is because school level so after solving this we will get x is equal to 10 that is 10 milligram per liter once you have to check and let us know that whether it is correct or not so do it on yourself so x will be that is the dissolved oxygen initial will be 10 milligram per liter that will be the correct answer so in this simple formula by using this we will be able to get anything if it is asked in the question by solving this one so i hope you have followed this let's move to the next question so this second question is bit analytical and it is related to the subject so the subject the question is the waste can be categorized as hazardous if what so if we know what is the criteria to tell any object or any category of thing as hazardous then we will be able to solve this question easily. So for that let us know what is the criteria for the hazardous waste according to the environmental protection agency that is EPA. So EPA has given four categories if any one of them is found in any of the material then it is called as hazardous waste. So they these four are first of all ignitability, next is corrosivity third is reactivity fourth is toxicity 
So this ignitability means something which catches fire easily. That is something which is flammable, जो बहुत जल्दी आग को कैच कर लेता है. Next is corrosivity. That means which can cause rust or decompose the materials. Next is reactivity, जो कि vigorously react करता है और which is something explosive in nature. Toxicity is that is something which is toxic to water, air, something or toxic to even our organisms. Which is poisonous is considered toxic. So these four characteristics are given for the hazardous waste. If any of one of them is there, then it is considered as hazardous. So among these two important thing we should know because it is very important as per the subject related ignitability. There are three types of ignitable forms. They are for liquids which is having a flash point. That means if any liquid burns at a temperature less than sixty degrees Celsius. Or less than one forty degree Fahrenheit, then it is considered as highly ignitable, or it is hazardous. And the examples are alcohol, gasoline, and acetone. Next thing is coming to the solids. So solids which are spontaneously they are combustible, they are called as the ignitability is high. They are hazardous. In case of gases, they are oxidizers. That means they are oxidizing agent. And compressed gases, they constitute the ignitable hazardous material so what are these compressed gases so the non liquefied gases are known as compressed pressurized or permanent gases that means these gases do not become liquid when they are compressed so normally when the gases are compressed they are becoming they are forming into the liquid form but these gases they are not becoming liquid when they are compressed so they are considered under this category of ignitability So the common examples of the gases which are compressed gases are oxygen, nitrogen, helium, and argon. So you should remember this. These are also important. Why I am telling all this? I will tell you because it will be helpful to solve the answer. Next thing is corrosivity, where we have discussed if any liquid is having a pH of less than two or more than twelve point five, then it is called as the corrosive nature. That liquid will be called. So how? Because if it is less than two, that means it is very acidic. If it is more than twelve point five in pH scale, that means it is very alkaline. So these two properties are determined for the corrosive nature. So here in the question, what it is asked that we have to find which is hazardous. So first is it is telling that if the substance, the waste, burns at a temperature more than sixty degrees Celsius, then it is hazardous. No, if it is burning. Less than the temperature of sixty degrees Celsius, as we have discussed in the last slide, then only it will be considered as hazardous. Coming to the second point, if its pH is above twelve point five, yes, this category is matching with the hazardous category waste, which is for the corrosive nature. Next, coming to the third point, let us see. So this thing is it reacts slowly with water. That is also not possible because it should be vigorously reactable. So all of the above will also be not possible because C and A we have eliminated. So option number B will be correct. If the substance, the waste is having pH above twelve point five, then it will be considered hazardous as per these things which we have read now. So I hope you have understood this. Let's move to the next question. So the next question is also taken from the sample question for the ES paper of GATE. So the question is there are four stages in the life of a lake. Eutrophic, oligotrophic, mesotrophic, or senescent and senescent. So we have to correctly identify the order of the stages in the life of a lake. And here, the correct option will be option number C. Yes, first case, the condition of the lake will be oligotrophic. Oligo means nutrient is less. So lack of nutrients means oligotrophic kind of lake. So initially there is lack of nutrient. That's why it is oligotrophic. Second step is number three. That means mesotrophic. That means it is not that much highly nutrient enriched. Neither or nor it is very less or least having the nutrient. So it is the intermediate part. Then third step is number one. That is eutrophic. That means here the nutrient content in the lake is very high, which is not good for any lake, which is very very harmful. So that is eutrophic condition. And finally, it will be senescent. So senescent stage का मतलब होता है it is the kind of biological aging so gradual deterioration it can leads to death so it is the close point of the death that the lake is going to die and no more further life are going to sustain so 2 3 1 4 will be the correct stages let's move to the next question the next question is coming up the question is if sy denotes specific yield and sr denotes the specific retention then which formula is correct 
so this is related to the rocks or soil so here it is asking what is the relationship between sy and sr when we are adding it and here the correct option will be option number b yes when the specific yield adds up with the specific retention of the soil or rock it gives the porosity of the soil or rock so it is important kindly note it down let's move to the next question So the next question is coming up from the water section and here the question is if in a city the maximum daily water draft is 25 MLD. So MLD means you should know millions of liters per day as per the unit of municipality water supply system and the fire draft is given as 35 MLD and maximum hourly draft is given as 40 MLD. So the question is asking what is the coincident draft? So even if you don't know all these things and you are new to this, you should only concentrate on the formula which I will be telling you, which will be helpful for you in the exam, no need to go deep. So the formula to find out the coincident drift is very, very tricky and also very interesting. The formula is first you should add the maximum daily water draft with the fire draft. So let us add them. So after adding them, that means maximum daily draft is 25 MLD plus fire draft is given as 35 MLD. So after adding them, we'll get the value as 60. So this is not the answer. The answer will be, next we'll have to compare with the maximum hourly draft. Yes, the maximum hourly draft is given 40 MLD. So this 40 MLD is lesser than the value which we got after adding maximum daily water draft and the fire draft. So if it is lesser, then in this case we have to consider the value which is more that will be the coincident draft yes ye aapko note down karna hai first we have to add the maximum daily water draft with the fire draft and then we will compare with the hourly draft so whichever value will be more that will be the correct option so in this case according to this question 60 is more than 40 so we'll go for 60 but in some cases if the hourly draft is more then we will go for that value so it is important kindly note it down Let's move to the next question. So the next question is the sustainable development can be thought of in terms of three spheres. So what are these three spheres making the sustainable development? So sustainable development means if we are using the resources very very efficiently and preserving it for the future generation then that is called as sustainable development. And here the correct option will be option number B. Yes environment economy and society so these three things if we are considering together and we are using very very efficiently then it will lead to the sustainable development of our society so i hope you have learned something from this video and if you want to know more about es and if you want to learn more then do subscribe the channel to get further updates and yes if you can join our telegram and instagram group you can extend your preparation for the net environmental science as well as get environmental science engineering and ecology and evolution paper so see you guys in our next video